hello all in this tutorial we will combine the modules that we have developed before and we'll complete the hardware design for our ip so we have already done uh, two three modules we already have the module for line buffer and we have the control logic and we also have the convolution module okay so we'll combine them and we'll make our image processing ip so this will be our topmost module Let me call it image process top. Now this module will be interfacing it with the DMA controller and remember the DMA controller it has the axis stream interface. Okay, so data comes as well as goes through the axis stream interface. And we also have an interrupt signal coming from the IP. So we'll add that also. Okay, so we are going to follow the AXI uh, interface. So let's call it AXI clock, input AXI reset. And AXI, they follow active low reset. So that is this one. Then let's write the slave interface. So this is the interface through which data will be coming from the DMA controller. So let's say I data valid we have, and we have 8 bit data. Basically, this is the pixel data, I data. And we need to say O data ready. Then we have the master interface through which we'll be sending the data back to the DMA controller. So we have output O data valid, output our 8 bit data after convolution, and we have input I data ready. Okay, so that completes the axis stream. And we also need to add this interrupt signal. So we have entry interrupt. Okay. So now let's instantiate the module. So first let's instantiate this image control module. Okay. So this is where our line buffers and all are sitting. So image, let's call it image control clock. We can directly connect to the axis clock. Reset okay we did the coding assuming this is active high reset but actually reset is active low so we will invert it and we'll connect it so pixel data that is this data itself input data and pixel data valid will be i data valid now there is no ready signal coming from this module because uh, as I mentioned before we are writing to a memory so basically memory will be always ready so that's why we didn't add that signal there but uh, we'll have to write some logic for controlling this ready signal which we'll do okay so these two these are the output from the image controller which will be going to this convolution module so let's add that convolution module okay Con okay in clock there is no reset signal for this module because uh, there is nothing to reset inside that that module just always works so I pixel data, so the data here is the output from this module. So let's take this, take this, and it is 72 bit. So via 31 down to zero pixel data, we also have pixel data valid, uh, this one. Let's take that via pixel data valid. And 
the output from the convolution goes as the output of this module. So this will connect to Odata and uh, this valid we will connect to Odata valid. Okay, so here also We didn't connect the ready signal. Okay, so remember uh, this ready signal it is coming from the DMA controller when you are sending data. Uh, same way, this ready signal you are giving to the DMA controller when you are accepting data from the DMA controller. So, if you remember our previous uh, Axie Stream IP development, what we did was we directly connected this ready to this ready so that whenever uh, the DMA controller says he is not ready to accept data. You will tell the DMA controller. I am not ready to accept data Okay, so that would have worked but here um, One issue is we have Pipelining inside our convolution module. Okay, so the data coming from the line buffer It is not immediately going to the output. It is going through three levels of pipelining here So because of that what happens is even if you directly connect these two signals if the DMA controller says like I am not ready to accept data, you will tell the DMA controller you are not ready to accept data. But the only problem is you already have data in the internal pipelines. So I guess uh, if it is three line levels of pipelining, you already have three uh, data in the internal pipeline, and uh, uh, that you will lose actually because there is no handshaking within the pipelining. It is blindly taking data from the line buffer and uh, moving across the pipeline. So basically, directly connecting these two signals won't work. Okay, so the simplest way to do it, you can solve it in many ways. You can add uh, this control signal to the pipelining also, means the pipeline, it doesn't always work. That is also checking for the ready signal. That is one way. Another simplest way is to add an output buffer. Okay. In most design, you will see like we will have an output buffer or basically it will be a FIFO. We'll add a FIFO to the output to manage the mismatch between this input and the output. So what happens is the output from the convolution, I will not directly send it to the output. Instead of that, I'll be initially storing it in a FIFO and from the FIFO, it will be sent to the output. Okay. So I will put some control signal in the FIFO so that when the FIFO is almost full, I will say like I am not uh, ready to accept data. When the FIFO may become almost full, it will become almost full when the FIFO is not able to send data out, which is basically this ready signal is low. So in that case, because of the pipe, uh, FIFO, it will be able to store all this intermediate pipeline data internally. You won't lose that data. And later when this ready signal becomes high, the FIFO will be able to send it out. Okay, so you will see it in, in most designs. Usually there will be a FIFO at the input also to manage the mismatch between uh, uh, the burst rate between how data is coming and how you are processing data. But in our case, we don't need any input buffer because we already have a line buffer, which is kind of a buffer. So I'm just adding a FIFO to the output. Okay. So that's an IP code. We'll directly use Silings IP code to do it. FIFO generator. Okay. Let's call it uh, output buffer and we are going to use an XC stream FIFO. Okay, so not many options are there. Okay, here uh, I, I specify the width and here notice the width is specified in number of bytes actually. So we just need one byte, okay, 8 bit. It is in terms of byte, not in terms of bits. So there is something called T user width that is for sending this additional. Uh, signal optional one we don't have those signals so you can make it zero okay then okay five four depth okay we don't need a very large five four maybe because as i mentioned uh, when i back pressure in the worst case i will have three or four 
data in my pipelining. I just want to buffer only that much. Okay, so we can choose the smallest possible size to minimize the uh, resource utilization. Okay, so 16 data it can store. And I will add a programmable full signal here. And uh, there I am putting like 8. That means in, in ideal case, there shouldn't be any data in the file. Okay, so if the Axie uh, DMA controller is ready to accept data from me, I'll be continuously sending. So effectively data comes to the FIFO, it goes out of the FIFO. So it is like a transfer and buffer. But only when he is putting back pressure, uh, I will have problem. So in that case, I'll be back pressuring the DMA controller saying like, I am not ready to accept data. So what I'm doing here is if I have eight data in my, in my FIFO, that means there is some kind of back pressure coming from the master side, I will assert this signal, programmable full, and this signal will be connected to the ready signal, to the slave port. So once this signal comes away, I will say like, I am not ready to accept data. So he will stop sending it, but uh, I already have data in the pipeline, three or four, that will also get returned to the FIFO, but my FIFO is 16 deep, okay? So, and I already have eight. Still, it will make it uh, maybe 11 or 12 bytes inside the FIFO. Still, the FIFO won't overflow. So that's the logic. And uh, that's it. We need only that much. Okay, it will introduce two clock latency, but that is fine. It takes one. 18 kilobit. Okay, so internally the, it is going to use the block RAM, which is 36 kilobit. But the signings they can break one 36 kilobit block RAM into two 18 kilobit. Okay, so it's going to take 18 kilobit RAM or half block RAM. Okay, so we will let him generate it, but we can quickly go here and take the instantiation template. Okay, so let's instantiate it at the top. Output buffer, reset PC. Okay, these signals we don't need. This is clock reset, which is active low, so we can directly connect. Okay, this is his slave valid. So, as I mentioned before, the output from convolution or data, I will directly connect here and all data valid, I will directly connect here. Now, whether the FIFO is ready or not, I'm not checking because based on my current logic, okay, there is no case the FIFO won't be ready. He'll be at the maximum. He'll have uh, 16, uh, out of 16, he'll have maximum maybe 12. Because as soon as he is half full, I will say like, uh, I can't accept any more data. So there is no way like he will overflow and the signal will become low. Okay, and the output from the FIFO will connect to the output. Okay, so this signal, okay, this will connect to the output. Okay, so let me connect everything. Let me call it uh, convolved data stuff. And let's connect that here. And let's call this convolved data valid. And let's connect it here. So that makes more sensible name. And this output, okay, mx is valid. That we will connect to all data valid. And this ready, we will directly connect here. And uh, data, directly connect to all data. And this programmable full. Okay, so let's declare a wire. So this will become high when he is full. Okay, so I have this ready signal. That's what I want to manipulate. I will say assign is not of program of full. When he is not half full, I will say I am ready to accept data. Whenever he becomes half full, I will say 
I'm no longer ready to accept data. So let's declare them also. Convert data, that's also 8-bit, which is the output after conversion. Convert data and convert data value. Okay, so that completes uh, the Axis stream interface. Now the only stuff remaining is the interrupt signal. So when we should send an interrupt? So as I mentioned before, we have only four line buffer inside our IP. And once we finish processing one of the line buffers, we will send an interrupt to the processor saying, okay, I have a free line buffer. You can send the next line of the image. Okay, so that's where we are going to use the interrupt signal. So that interrupt signal should become one or become high whenever we have a free line buffer inside our IP. How do we know whether we have a free line buffer inside our IP? For that, we need to go back to the control logic and look at our small state machine. So if you remember, in the read buffer state, okay, when the read counter becomes 511 and uh, in the next clock, it is indicating we have finished reading from a line buffer. So once we have finished reading a line buffer, means we have a free line buffer available. So same case I can use to generate an interrupt signal. Okay, so let's call it O I and R from here itself. We'll make it one. And we'll go to idle state and in the idle state uh, we'll make it zero. So initialization also we'll make it zero. Now the interrupt signal, it will be only uh, only one clock wide, okay? The pulse width is only one clock because here I'm making it one. Next clock, I'll go to the idle state and I'll make it zero. Last tutorial, I mentioned some cases there is a minimum pulse width requirement for interrupt. But since we are going to use edge triggered interrupt, this is fine. If you are going for level triggered interrupt, maybe this will be insufficient, okay? Since we are using only edge triggered interrupt, it should be perfect. So let's come back here. So let me add that port here and just connect it to the output interrupt. Okay, so let's call it OINTR to indicate it's an output signal. Okay, so that completes our coding for our IP. Only thing left is converting it into IPX set format so that we can use it in our block design. So that step is exactly the same as our previous project where I designed the previous image processing IP. So you go to the tools, create and package new IP, and you choose uh, package your current project, not uh, create a new XE peripheral. Choose this one next, include XEA file. You should choose it because we have a FIFO signing score. So he will include that uh, FIFO also as part of your IP. And he's basically asking where the IP exat file should be stored. So let's say like uh, directly store wherever my current project is inside that folder. Later we will move this entire folder to our IP repo because we are keeping all our IPs there. Okay, so DVWADO image processing, that's where my project is sitting. So I'm just saying keep the IPX at uh, file there. Okay, so vendor. Okay, so let's call our IP just uh, image process. Let it be its name. Okay, IP for neighborhood image processing. Now, uh, port mapping, this again I have done in the previous tutorial. We just have to uh, map the ports. 
clock and reset this is actually stream interfaces so in the block design if you just want to drag and drop the signal you need to group them together then only Vivado will understand this is like a access stream interface so click on add interface and quickly going because I have already covered it before access stream RTL and choose master let's call it M access stream interface and port map this data with uh, this data this valid with this valid this ready with this ready okay so the port mapping is done so he grouped it m axis so similarly we have to group the slave interface also so next interface choose again axis stream and here choose slave interface and call it s axis to indicate the slave interface and this data to this data uh, valid to valid and ready to ready okay so again some warnings are there this is similar to our previous tutorial you need to specify which bus interfaces are controlled by this particular clock so just double click it go to parameters and uh, add a parameter and type associated associated bus interface and uh, under value you just type the interface name m underscore axis axis colon and s underscore axis these are the two interfaces okay so that one goes away optionally you can add the default clock frequency also which is 100 megahertz but without that also everything looks fine okay so that's it now there is no addressing uh, GUI it is going to look something like this as expected and just go review and review and package your IP now it is ready to use in your block design but one important thing we missed we haven't simulated our ip so whether it is really working or not we haven't checked that we will be doing in the next tutorial thank you